Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about shaft collars. So previously, we were talking about shaft couplings to combine two shafts together. For shaft collars, the main purpose of this is to prevent something from sliding off of a shaft. So there's different types of shaft collars you could be working with. Um, some, some of the most common, common ones you'll see is the two-piece shaft collar. So this allows you to assemble something without having to slide the shaft collar in place uh, prior to assembly. So you can see that there's like two screws you could just remove and then you could slide this part on and off. And then you also have a one piece shaft collar. So these, you typically need to plan ahead if it's um, gonna be blocked somewhere in your assembly. So um, this can make assembling a little bit more challenging depending on um, your sequence of putting things together. Uh, you also have the hinge shaft collar. So this is a two piece that's kind of connected. So uh, this could be nice if in case you like lose parts or something, this is kind of tied together. So uh, it's less likely to lose. And then this one here has a mountable shaft collar. So um, this might be useful if you have a face you want this to attach to. Uh, that could be nice. So it's good for gears, gears, pulleys, and sprockets. We'll talk more about these components later on. And then you also have the threaded shaft collar. So maybe it's going on something that needs to be threaded. There's going to be D-shaft ones. Maybe you have a square shape or a hex, hex, uh, yeah, hex shaft. So those are all different options you may use. So in this example, let's go over the two-piece shaft collar. So you could see here that um, this this one looks a lot similar to, yeah, this is pretty much like a for the coupling. But sometimes you'll also see it as a collar. So the names can be a little bit, uh, there, there's a little bit of overlap. But let's take a look at this one here. So the two-piece one. And when you choose these, you know, you have your shaft diameter, certain finishes that you care about, maybe it's keyed. And then you typically choose how thick you want it. Uh, but in our case, let's go ahead and choose a 0.25 inch diameter one. And let's go ahead and download this. And put it in our shaft collar folder. Okay, so this is our shaft collar. So let's show you an example in the assembly where you might care about this. So something happened to my. Okay, so let's see. Let's save this real quick. So a lot of times, um, certain applications is maybe you want to, let's say you have a shaft here. So this was point, point 0.25 diameter. So I'm just gonna sketch a shaft right now. So I'm gonna make a new part. And on my front plane, I'm gonna sketch. And then dimension this to be 0.25. And we'll just make it one inch long. Go to our folder, shaft colors. Okay, so now let's say we had, um, let's say we had like a U bracket, so Gonna make a new part, and then here I'm gonna sketch something really quick. I actually might make the shaft longer, but because I want to make this, I'll make this 0 0.5. This 0 0.5. I'm gonna extrude boss thin feature this. Let's make this point one to five inches, and then uh, actually 
Let's make this like one inch or maybe 0.5. And then this one should be 0.125, for example. And call this U channel. And then here we're going to make a hole. I could do a whole wizard, but I'm just going to sketch a circle here. And let's call this 0.25. And I'm going to have some distance, maybe 0.2. And I'll extrude cut this all the way through. Okay, so let's say we have some channel here. And then I'm going to make this a little bit longer. Let's make this uh, 1.5 inches. Okay, so I want to put this inside my assembly. So I'm going to make an assembly. I'll put our U channel first, and then our shaft, and then our clamps. You can see this clamp is kind of big. But if we mate this together, you can see that um, this is still a little bit short. So we can make this two inches instead. Okay. So notice if we have a shaft here, and let's say this is rotating, maybe this is connected to something. And then notice how this, this is going to be sliding back and forth, right? So one way is you could maybe add a sesquir in here, but then another option is you could use something like a shaft collar. So if we mounted this on one side and it's attaching to a shaft, um, that could be one way of constraining it. So I'm just going to mate it to the surface. So now if you made it like this, um, the shaft could still technically slide to the left. So you may need to have another block to constrain it. So I could have this on this side. Okay, so now if I were to mate this, let's just assume it's some distance away. Okay, so now if I have these two um, shaft collars on both sides, then the shaft is fixed in the middle and it can't move back and forth. And of course, in practice, you know, there's friction, so you'll need some uh, bearing components. So we'll talk about those in later videos, but um, at least you know that this sort of structure here, you can at least constrain it linearly from moving back and forth. So that's one application of using a shaft collar. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.